All right, Coach, start of the season, the Hornets beat the Spurs, one of the largest margins of victory in franchise history to start the season, 27 points. I just kind of want to know how you feel. How does it feel to be back out on the court and, and start a new season? No, it feels great, and uh, guys did a good job last night. You know, we've, we've had uh, more than our share of injuries here in the preseason, but they've worked hard, and we made uh, good progress, and I think it showed last night. I know we've kind of asked you this in your introductory press conference about what's different since you were here in your first stint in Charlotte, but you've had some time to maybe think about that and, and kind of grow with this team now that you know the guys a little bit better. So what, what do you think is different? The biggest difference is, you know, I, I was, you know, three years after I left here, you know, uh, coaching in Orlando, you know, so I've, I'm more experienced. I've coached a lot more games. Uh, I also think the experience last year being consultant in Brooklyn, where uh, I learned a lot, uh, I think organizationally, uh, a lot from Steve, a lot from Sean Marks, uh, about collaboration and working together. I got a chance to uh, see the challenges of having three superstar offensive players trying to find a way to play together, you know, with Kevin and James and Kyrie. So that was also a very beneficial year for me. We've, we counted it up, so I may be off one or two, but there's about 10 NBA coaches that have eventually split ways with a franchise and then been rehired again. So since you are one of the 10, I just kind of want to get your perspective on why you think that is that, that a, a coach and a franchise may split, split ways and then decide to, to come back later in life. Well, I, I mean, I think there's probably a couple of variables. One is, you know, when I was let go here, uh, you know, it was fair. I mean, we had gone from being a playoff team in two of our first three years here to uh, not making the playoffs in the last two. And so, uh, and also in what we do, you know, if you, if you make it five years in an NBA franchise, uh, actually, you know, that's a certain level of success in itself. I think the other part here, and, and I'm sure there are different variables uh, everywhere, but you know, one, you know, Michael and I had a good relationship. We stayed in touch. Um, he's always been great to me. And, uh, you know, I worked for Mitch with the Lakers when I was an assistant there. So Mitch and I had a relationship. He, too, we stay in touch. I've got great respect for him. So I think those were part of the, uh, again, the variables that worked out in my favor. And you, gave, you ended up giving your apartment to Mitch Kupchak. Did you get it back or are you living somewhere else? You let me know when we <laughs> interviewed, there was no chance I was going to get it back. Yeah. And, and to your credit, the first time you were here, the roster completely different now. But it's also the roster is completely different than, or a little bit different than when you actually took over this job. Most notably, Miles Bridges is not with the team right now. How have you just navigated that change? I just think that's uh, maybe the, the advantage I have of being in the NBA for a long time. The one thing you learn quickly to do as a coach is you coach who you have that day. That's it. Get up in the morning. You know, I meet with Joe Sharp. Uh, these are the guys that are good today. To be honest, that was a big part of our preseason. You know, we only had, I think, a couple days where everybody was able to do everything. And you have to lock in that way so you can maximize your day. So when guys are out, you know, you have to, you know, know where you are. Also know what's ahead, you know, but uh, you have to concentrate on who you have that day and, and try to have good days with them. And kind of going off to that point, we saw James Booknight play 14 minutes in last night's game in the season opener. Fans questioning that, obviously, with him being in the headlines, being arrested for a DWI. So I guess just what went into the decision to play him and to keep him in the rotation? Yeah. Well, I, th I think uh, the, the first part is, you know, organizationally, you know, we're still investigating everything. Uh, and then the second part of that is as a coach, you know, my job is to win games. And, you know, again, I'm going to look at the guys who are eligible to play that day and then give our team the best chance to win. Let's talk now about the roster. A lot of fans excited over Nick Richards, Dennis Smith giving some meaningful minutes, Terry Rozier just being Terry Rozier last night. What excites you most when you look at the roster right now? Well, I think it fits together well. They've done a good job of, of putting a group together that fits in a certain style of play. This team was built to run. Versatile players, uh, shot making, shot creation. And I also think that regardless of what people think, 
there's a ton of intangibles, a ton of toughness in the group, and I think that's going to come out. This team was able to get that win without LaMelo Ball on the court. I know we're still kind of waiting for him to get back from injury, and the whole team is excited to, to see him come back. But what, what excites you most about LaMelo Ball, and where do you really see his ceiling in this league right now? Oh, I mean, I, I think his goal should be to be the, the best point guard in the NBA. You know, it's his commitment to – become the best player he can be. He was here in Charlotte the majority of the summer uh, in the gym daily. Uh, he's done a great job in the weight room, but he has an incredible skill level, a great feel for the game, but his love of the game to me is is something that you look for as a coach always. Now tomorrow night, the home opener. I don't know if you know this, but there is a new fan section going to be up in the stands. I think it's between 216 and, and 218. How do you feel about the Hornets having a fan section inside Spectrum Center and, and just what it says, I guess, about the fan base in general? I go back to, uh, you know, the playoff series we have here with Miami. You know, we won game three, won game four. The fans were a huge part of that and then came back here with the most disappointing game I coached in the five years here where we lost game six with a, a chance to win the series. But the fans were incredible. You know, Michael always talks about getting to the place where we're top four or five team in the East, where the playoffs are this season every year, and what a big asset our fans would be uh, in, in that situation. So, no, it's great. Uh, and uh, I know our guys are pumped up for it. New Orleans is a terrific team. so. Uh, well, you know, we'll have to build on the other night, but it'll be a good night.